It is Jim Cren, no restrictions, with my co-host, John Vento, engineer, producer, Jim Potolsky. We are at John's uh, studio in Gibsonia recording. It is between Christmas and New Year's uh, as this recording has taken place. The Steelers beat Cincy as of this recording. We have a, it's a weird thing. It's like a 14% chance of making <laughs> the playoffs. I don't know how they figured this out, but I don't like 14%. No, it's not if good, If we Jim. win, it bunts, bunts, goes like 30% or something. Yeah. But I'm just kind of distraught over this. <laughs> it's Mason, very upsetting. Mason Rudolph with your nose so bright once you got our offense tonight. And he did. He saved you into Christmas. What's going on? R Mason Rudolph? My wife, Michelle, loves him. Yeah? Oh, yeah. She watched every single play of that game rooting for Mason. Really? You know, he is a handsome dude. He's a handsome guy. So I have a concern there. Right? He's a really good looking dude. Good for him. And he loves the Lord, you know, and that my Michelle He's is a, good man. You know, a woman of faith. Mason's a good man. He is a good guy. And I wonder if they ever gave him a shot. You know, it's like, I don't know. Well, he's been in the league for six years, yeah. okay? If you're in the league and you make the money, he's ma he's made nine million dollars. I've heard people say, "I feel so bad for Mason Rudolph. I really do. My heart breaks for him." I'm like, he made nine million dollars. Yeah. His body's not beat up. Nope. He looks like a movie star. Yeah. I think he'll get by. He'll, he'll get, get some good therapy to get over this yeah. whatever problem he has being third string. And he just won a game, throwing enough nice yards passes. and touchdowns to. Yeah. Added a year or two to his career, maybe longer, when they turn 55. An NFL player is vested after three years, and oh, well. they, they make ballpark. I may be not 100% accurate on this if you look it up, but it, it's something in the – depending on what they put in, but the ballpark between, I don't know, 15 grand a month or something like that. Really? Retirement, if you make it three years, wow. you get vested into the NFL. Well, the average guy – only makes it four years or something, the right? The average only makes it, yeah, three to four years. A running back, especially, is real hard. But it's it's the hardest thing to make. I mean, it's like you could be a superstar in college, and what is it, point five percent make the NFL yeah. from college? So it is rather amazing. We talk about it like you know, like it's nothing. And this whole concussion issue, and how many of them have shortened lives? I mean, well, you read about it all the time. It's a physical, yeah, it's a physical job, physical game. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's a great game. It's America's game. We live and breathe the Steelers. It's like our religion here, man. It's yeah. a, as you know, we win. We're all happy. The entire economy picks up in Pittsburgh. Isn't that something? And, well, we, and it goes down if we lose. Yeah, we win. But, people are buying things. <laughs> speaking of winning, yeah. I heard a rumor that your podcast, this podcast, continues to climb. It's like a hit record. It It's climbing the charts with a bullet. This is really cool. Yeah, well, there's, there's this... Uh, Searching its feed spot, and they did like the they compile it like through uh, podcast blogs and things like that, and all these different uh, uh, avenues to get the research uh, and culminate the top 10 or top 20 of something. Like, if you go to feed spot, you could say, uh, feed spot, give me the top uh, 20 wine magazines, and mm -hmm. it'll give you, you know, some great wine magazine that sommeliers recommend, some of the top 20 in the United States. So they all, they had they have as one of the categories the top twenty stand up comedian podcasts, and they rate it every month if you make it. And I've made it every month for the last two years or so, but in the top twenty. But since I added John <laughs> Vento to the show and Jim true. Patolsky, I am number seven. Wow, out of uh, the top. Uh, 20 podcast. Now, I, it's an honor. So, yeah, I'm, I, it, Feed Spot's wonderful, and I'm honored to be part of it. Congratulations, and we're honored and to be thank part of it, too. for letting me uh, be, yeah, be part of that in, in number seven. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I, I do want to mention uh, I am performing at the Oaks Theater January 20th, 730, special guest Larry Richard. Wow. Larry is going to come up and tell some stories. I'm going to go up to my... Uh, 90 minute show and I, it's at the Oaks Theater go to the Oaks Theater dot com January 20th 7.30 at the Oaks it is the one of the most beautiful theaters 
in the Pittsburgh area, really maybe is. in the country. It's just, They've I really, done a wonderful job it, restoring it. It is a restored, retro, beautiful theater. Yeah. They have, uh, they sell alcohol, I oh, believe, yeah, a nice right? bar, yeah. They're a nice bar. Food, they sell snacks and stuff. They got night, good. yeah, food, yeah. and it, it's... And Everyone's then, so nice that works there. The family kind of vibe, you know, when you go there, and it's a real warm atmosphere. We just did our Christmas show there, and John did, and, and, and uh, Larry, and... Beth Claus, and so I got to yeah. be part of that, which was fun, singing a couple songs and get, getting up on the stage. I just kept I kept thinking about January twentieth, thinking, man, I cannot wait again to uh, get on stage and perform stand up here at this theater. So January twentieth, seven thirty, we have about one hundred and twenty tickets sold so already. Far, so it's starting to sell. Wow, yeah, starting to sell, Jim. That's fantastic. You're going to sell out. I'm excited. So yeah. theoakstheater.com. The dot Get your tickets now. So I appreciate that. I can't wait to to see you there. And, uh, and can I mention, what a great show at Steamworks last that was, Saturday. That was fun, man. I work at Steamworks uh, four oh, times man. a year. Uh, You're a blessing. I, I have I'll another date coming up, I, I think, in a few months. A couple, few months. I do every few yeah. months. Like March, I think it's the first time back and uh, at Steamworks. And if you, you haven't gotten a chance to go there, it's a cool room. Uh, I'll announce it always on Facebook and, and all over social media when I perform there. And it's about... 50 seats maybe in the room it's like a living room or something yeah. or something. byob which is cool so next time i announce that i hope you come out to see that show also because that's kind of relaxed and laid back and we have fun and just kind of a, an evening an evening with kind of you know i'm not going to tell you any of your new material oh no i could talk about no talk no about. you, you know the 20 is coming up but that's okay my favorite were the uh photos that mm young ladies receive and you and, hey and I, mom look here's a keeper for our podcast <laughs> listeners they're so loyal uh they're so loyal to listen to this show i gotta tell you that one so here's the the new material it came from i have this wonderful beautiful uh girlfriend uh you know who is just incredible and and when you have a girlfriend you don't have a girlfriend uh everything changes your whole perspective of your life kind of changes when you're with that person because in every guy is kind of like that we we have this one side of us, but after you're with a girl for a while, the real you comes out, and in the part of you that's kind of fussy, like Mister Fussy, you're like kind of you know, like you have your your things in your home or your part, condo, house, whatever, in a certain order, certain routines you have, and, and this person all of a sudden is changing things and moving things around, <laughs> using things you and, and all of us. I don't know what happens, why we do that, but but we're trying to be romantic. We're trying to be cool we're, in our minds. Really, we, we're Antonio Banderas because, you know, we are dating. That's right. We are dating. That's what we do. We go out and date. We have a good time, right? We go to dinner and we come back. Let's play, you know, like Antonio Banderas. That's right. You see, we had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, something happens where the routine is broken. And all of a sudden, Mr. Fussy comes out. <laughs> Mr. Fussy. You're no longer Antonio. Or you're like... <laughs> Hey, excuse me, that's, what is that? That's, that is my, that's my honeysuckle jasmine spray. That's my spritzer. That's for my face. You're spraying all over the room. That's not a room freshener. You, you, there's only so much, don't use that. You know, you're like, what, what happens to me? I don't know why. All of a sudden, it's you not know, just don't you. use that. Put that down. Jim, I was single for don't close to 20 years. <laughs> I never had anybody in my house. Oh my God. Right? It's, I, it happens, right? What do you do? You just start, hey, you, you don't move that cop. Uh, That's my cop. Yeah, or you adjust. You have to. My favorite. Now, or you'll live alone. <laughs> one of these episodes, we're going to talk about dating over 50 or dating hey, over 60. Hey, yeah. So I had this one situation. I was mm -hmm. introduced to a lovely young lady, and she kind of wanted to stay, like multiple days. That's it. And Camping I had up. to say no. It was like, no, we're you not. You weren't ready for that. No, I was You were not, not ready for someone to move in and change your life. To invade my space. This particular and, person, yeah. So my you friend, if you my dates. dear friend who introduced me to this young lady, right? evidently she called him and said that I was really mean. and Oh, God. Wow. Right. So he calls me and says, hey, what did you do? You know, I, I referred you to this person. And <laughs> you had a lovely date and you kicked her out of your house and you were mean. And you, I went, oh, time out. I was not mean, I was respectful, but 
that's my space. Yeah, well, a date is a and, date, but sharing the more you be in on the title deed of your home, that's different. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And it, it, now, you have to have a four or five like dates for that. It lean into like two, three days, and <laughs> that wasn't cool with me. And uh, well, it was really a, a bad situation. That's pretty quick. I got, re- I got. It, it it takes months, months and months and months, and it has to be a mutual I agree. decision before that kind of stuff happens. Of course, right? I agree. Or the first trip away together, it takes months. You know, just, I'm not. I'm like you. I, I, I in in my girlfriend's the same way. It, it take a month. It takes months. We're Absolutely. Trying to, you know, trying to figure it out. You know, I I been single some sixty four. So since sixty, since I was yeah. sixty, and my my marriage ended. And and it's such a weird thing. Uh, I didn't understand anything. And it's funny talking to women. I, I have to say, I know we have it hard. Guys have it tough out there, but, but women have a little tougher. I, I, I think, think they think, have it tougher. I, I do think so. Uh, they have, the, there's a strange phenomenon. I've talked to, to, to young ladies about this and, and I'm, I'm amazed uh, by it. Uh, they back, they would back me up and I'm sure some of young ladies listening will back me up on this. I couldn't believe that, that they have guys take photo of their their thing thing ding a ling a ding their little thing <laughs> or whatever yeah, their sick. part and they take and they they send it to the woman yeah like after a date or two you know i i i mean start off with a drawing i think no i'm kidding yeah. <laughs> start with a sketch and then go to a photo i don't think i don't get that what is thing. the point i don't know that's it I... there is not in their mind because there's a lot of girls that say oh yeah jim a lot of young women say they i've gotten pictures like photos from people send from the front i'm like you got to be kidding what is going through the guy's mind is he picturing the the woman getting the photo and just looking at it going oh my god oh my let me call my mother <laughs> mom i have a keeper here you yes he sent a photo of it yeah. it's fantastic i'm gonna blow it up and put it above my fireplace yeah I'm crying. Star, I'm sorry. I'm crying. Yeah, I mean, what did that's what they're thinking. It's real common. It's the end. It's the end. You're I not know. gonna. You're not gonna. Your block call. No call back. And you know. I assume you've never done. I know I've never done. No, it. no, I ever, never. I would ever. never, ever, ever, ever do that. Yeah. Like I said, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even send a sketch of it over uh, to someone. Th- that's rude. And I think I. I can't see how that would work. I can't see a, a woman saying, "Wow, I've been waiting. I waited two dates, and you finally <laughs> sent it. Why didn't you send it?" You know, what took you so long yes. to send the dong? You have to be. <laughs> yes. And even after being dating, even or a long yeah. time, I still wouldn't do that. Still wouldn't. Do, I mean, I imagine like I, I, I always think about this. Uh, I was reading about uh, Vincent Van Gogh. I saw that exhibit that was here in town about a year ago. There, It was real cool. The immersion of Van Gogh. And I remember seeing how he cut his uh, cut his ear off. Mm-hmm. Uh, gave it to a, a young lady, and and she didn't want him. She gave him the friendship talk, worst <laughs> ever friendship talk. I, that had to be so tough, sitting there, one ear, glasses falling down continually, yeah. looking at her, going, "But no, but sorry, we're just friends. We could be friends." But, it's not me. It's you. Yeah, I mean, it's not you. It's me. It's me. I don't want to ruin a friendship yeah. or, or another ear. And, and here's your ear back. Your I wonder if she gave it back. back. I think she kept it. I'm not sure if she uh. took gave it. She should have gave the the ear back, but she didn't. That must have been like the. It's probably the, poor the, guy. That's like, same as like the the in the, his era, 120 years ago or whatever. That must have been like the the equivalent of sending the private part picture, sending yeah. the ear. Maybe it's like, oh my god, why did he send my why did he send his ear? <laughs> Why his ear? Well, it was the beginning, and then they were started working their way down. Doesn't he have? Doesn't he have friends? Like you know, Vinny. I... Vinny, send flowers first. <laughs> have it open with the ear. It's pushy. It's too bad. What'd you do with the ear? That would. That's I can't a... even imagine. I mean, the poor girl had to. He must have really been into her. Yeah. Every we, guy out there knows. Uh, you we, know, guys do eh, stupid. Well, know, women do too. But we do stupid things. You know, especially as we get older, right? You pull Van Gogh. It's tougher to date when you're older. I mean, you and I are both blessed. We both have our Michelles. Oh, my God. Yes. Right? We got our Michelles. I everybody, never, should, everybody should have a Michelle. It's you, great. I think you should get one, yeah. It's or, wonderful. It's or wonderful. you could it's a blessing. get a bride from Russia and rename her Michelle. <laughs> I never got, uh, that is a wild thing. Huh? Oh, I know. A bunch of guys. I got what? friends that have you brides have friends from the who Philippines. Have, no. Oh, yeah. Russia. You know people I that do, have them? I do. That's so And they're very amazing. happy. Really? Now my question wow. is how long will these, how long will it take for these women to be Americanized? 
And then uh, once they're a American, year, I, a year. Uh, I hope it's longer. You think longer? Because he's my friend. Are they happy? My How long have they been happy? married? Are they married? Did they? Did they? Yeah, did yeah, they oh, they're definitely married. So they came here from Russia and they got married on the blind. That's it. No, they're, not on the blind. There's dating sites. Okay. Oh, they date. There's dating sites uh, and they Skype. Or is that called? Is that Skype where you do the? Well, now yeah, you can do I, yeah. it through Zoom or whatever. Right. Then both of my friends who did this, yeah, they then went over to that country, yeah, and they spent like a month. And then once that worked, they brought the young lady you, back. Wow. I don't. And they're I mean, happily I, married. I, I'm happy for them. They're yeah. happy with it. Oh, yeah. At this point. I, I just think it would be, I mean, I hope I hope they are, and I want them to be happy, you know, to each their own. Yeah. I'm all for it, you know. One's the love. Philippines and one's Russia. But, but, but in my mind, I guess I can't help but think it's transactional in it a sure way. It sure feels that way. You know, it's it? like, well. You don't have to eat gruel anymore and live in a hut. That's right. You can live in a place called McKee's Rocks. It's yeah. like heaven. <laughs> and eat permani sandwiches. They put yeah. the fries on the meat and we get real steak. Yeah, I think both and they'd be both like, I will marry you. Uh, I will marry married. you now. That's what they say. They show them the picture of a permani sandwich. They say, I'll marry you now. They show them the beautiful Glenshaw, the sunrise of Glenshaw. And they say, look, this is the sunrise of Glenshaw. Yeah. This is the sunset in Blanox. And they say, I will come from Russia to America. I want to go now. When can I be in America? And they, boom, right, they come right here. And they're here. They're married. And then how long before them. they Can't get Americanized? Them. And then what happens? I'm thinking once they get their first, uh, well, since it's kind of transactional, I would say once they get their first credit card in the mail. I thought nice you were going to say their first yens or hot dog. That too. First yens that or hot dog. That could change them forever. And, and their credit line goes. And, 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 and they go, you know what? They have these, a lot of shops here. Oh, America. yeah. You know, a lot of fun here in America. And, uh, and you're free and you don't have to stand in line. You don't go to jail yeah. for taking out a library book or something, whatever they do over that. Oh, I do. God bless them. I, I don't know. I, I you well, it's more I'd love common to visit some of those countries in the Philippines. Like my friend there. that has the Filipino, the Filipino wife. Yes, it's very, very common for American businessmen, and to, during World what? War II, to, and you know they brought a to lot to marry. Oh, you have to to fall really? in love, meet Filipino women, wow. and bring them over. Yeah. But this is like this is like out of a catalog, though, right? It's like mail order bride. Kind well, no, of, right? it's so online it dating. It's not a catalog anymore. Well, it's 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 okay. So you can have Asian yeah, da- Asian Match dot com, Filipino Match dot com. Seriously, and, these and are so all. So they, they they date on Skype. They date on yeah on the video. Just That's like we would. I mean, we you drive don't anymore. Around. You do the online thing and you chitter chat. Unless it's what do they call? But you have to meet. What them. do they call that when you don't meet them and you get. Jim Virtual Lee? reality. No, uh, uh, I don't know. Catfishing. Oh, well, like that could the happen. Notre too. Dame linebacker. That, yeah, that, that could happen. That poor guy. Do you see the documentary on that? On uh, Monty, Monty Teo. I remember that story. Oh, my God. I didn't see the documentary. I heard about it. It was a dude. Yeah, it was amazing. Monty Teo. Is that you're talking about the linebacker? Yeah. yeah. Teo. Teo. We and made he up a was whole, a wonderful a guy. Well, he didn't make anything up. He thought well, he, he was, was catfished, yeah. And then... But he kind of got caught up in a lie, right? I big. Mean, and then he was told she got killed in a car wreck. He was told this. By yeah. her family. Right, right. Because that was the way to end it. <laughs> oh, my God. And then later, she came back. You have to see the documentary. I think it's on Netflix. It is on Netflix. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, it's crazy. I'm all in. And a guy like that, who was yeah. a wonderful young man. Right, right. A college student. He was no dummy. An NFL draft pick. He ended up in the NFL, yeah. How Play, could you... play for the Chargers, I think. Like, at what point do you say, why aren't we meeting after two years? Two I, yeah, years? that's really, you know, that's... You should be you should be drawing your unit. But no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at I, least... Who that, knows? They may have changed. Some, sending some letters. <laughs> but, but, but why... Yeah, two years, but that goes back... It may have been longer. Let's go back to this, this uh, mail order thing. So... So you're on a video, though. Well, I guess you're yeah. okay. You see them. You're they not, see it's you. It's not mail order. It's online dating. I'm sorry. Well, I don't mean to correct you. You're no, the, it's not. But it kind of, right? You're attracted like my friend Matt. Do they have to pay to get on this site? It's online dating. My, my friend I mean, Matt they, but, has a beautiful wife from Thailand. Oh, I think it's great. I mean, He if you did find online your hat, dating, and he loves Asian women. Oh, I have His a lot, bride is I've, beautiful. I have a lot of friends who did online dating. They met their wives. Right. And it's cool. And okay. women have met their husbands. Yeah. Any way you can do it is fantastic. You know, God has works in mysterious ways. Yep. Or the universe or spirit, whatever you believe in. And now the but world's smaller than ever, ways. Jim. 
Yeah. So it is cool, uh, but it's just you. It's just different, I guess, because of the where well, you pay. Don't they? I know there's places where you have to pay though. To to I saw documentaries on that okay. too, where, where they pay to go to Russia. Oh, to find you a bride, and they have women. Like okay, like a date match date there. Uh, dating. You date like twenty people there, and they just pick which you one. Pick one, and then she marries you. Okay, well, I think comes that's back different. To the United States. My that, friends, so went, this was this online. They didn't do thing. that. Okay, this was just watching, talking on online video, dating, and just saying, okay, at one point, while they're on video, she's in the Philippines. Let's use that okay. for example. He's here, and he just says, "You have to see Wilmer Dang. You have to see." <laughs> All the beautiful sites of North Hills, South Hills, and Monroeville. Yeah. If you've ever been to Monroeville, you, you'll see what I mean. And, and Murraysville and Plum. And and they say, I want to see Plum Borough. And they huh. come over. Is it, So that's basically what you're saying. They, they, they say, you fly over here? No, no, and, my and, guys went there. Oh, they go spent there? Spent a few weeks. Well? Or up to a month. Everything was cool. They, they Up to a month? Yeah, and then they came back. Interesting. Or so, arranged for her to come here. Okay. They got married here. Wow. And here they are. They're, so, they're, so they the the intention is to get married then in a way. And oh yeah, they're looking for they're a partner. They're saying, looking for a wife. Yeah, this isn't like just hey, you know, I'm gonna date and well, no, they cut can't. off my ear and send my ear. Yeah, if you like not, me, uh, I'll come over. This is like real. Like yeah, I'm gonna this marry isn't you. Like, uh, like dating from, a girl from uh, McKee's Rock. So she is dating. She is gonna marry. She's thinking the same thing. Yeah, they're on the same wavelength. It's the same wavelength. And because with the that, online thing, you can say what you're looking for: casual relationship, right? Serious dating, blah blah blah. Or uh, I, I guess to each their own. I mean, yeah. I'm sure. I, I know there are still uh, uh, what the arranged, arranged marriages are still going on. I had a buddy of mine who was from India. I was going to say and, that. Yeah. Uh, a good buddy, and uh, I haven't talked to him in a couple of years, but. He worked out at this gym. I worked at it, and real nice guy. We became friends, and he had an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. And the girl was gorgeous, stunningly beautiful. Yeah. And, and he got lucky. He got lucky, and uh, he's still married, from what I heard yeah. from through friends. So well, a few don't years, they but, go back? Like I know a lot of Indian right, guys here. Right. He he ended up staying here. He had a great job. Right, but they go back to find their wives, or or well, get. This was the the parents. Um, Okay. Get the wife somehow through other parents. Like the parents were like the agents or something. I don't know. But, but so the parents get together and there's a dowry involved. Yeah. Marrying the two together. And, but they get to say no. Like, like, you know, it's arranged, but not in other words. So if they, they meet a couple times and they say, I can't, this isn't, this person's just not the one. Do you know Bob Banerjee? Back. One of Pittsburgh's great musicians. Okay. Indian. Yeah. He tells a great story of how he met his wife. He, same thing. He was here in U.S. Okay. He went back to India and was presented. And Bob, if you're listening, right, right. you got to come on as a guest because Bob's a cool guy. Okay. He was presented, yeah. as I understand it, I've heard him tell the story, like three or four different women. Wow. And the woman he selected oh, had wow. a Led Zeppelin album, like... When he, Indian, when he met her and went to the house. It's the Indian Bachelor. She had, yeah. She had albums like you know Led Zeppelin and rock and roll. And okay. Because he, he's a musician and he's a rock and roll guy. Yeah. And he knew. That's he gave my, her the rose. That's my girl. He gave her the rose. And that's who he married. And, wow. Uh, All over on Led Zeppelin. Now, whether Bob was joking or not, I don't yeah. think he was. No, it's probably like music. But that's was the, the story that he told. She has to like music, right? Yep. yep. Right, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like for me, I need a sense of humor. Yeah, you know, you, there's things in common. So that's amazing. That I, I'm happy that it works out. So uh, you're of all the friends, mm -hmm. you're saying you're saying several of them. Three, okay, say okay, three. At this but, point, three for at three. this point, three for three. There, my, my one friend is still happily married. It's been mm -hmm. a couple of years now, so they're all still happily yeah. married together, huh? Yeah. Wow, the that's longest fantastic. is Ma Matt with his beautiful bride from Thailand. Okay, again, it was just it's just Match dot com only yeah. international. That's cool. The yeah. other two, uh, I think Matt might be gone on seven or eight years. The other mm -hmm. two guys are between three and four years. Well, once you see Coriopolis, you're in. You're it's in, beautiful, man. beautiful. This you know they go through the winter here. It's so 
amazing. Uh, All joking aside, though, we are. It's a nice. <laughs> I mean, we're not exactly. Uh, the weather's not real cold. The I love roads the city. suck. Love this. But city. it's a great place to be. This is a great because city of people. Live. I, I people. yes, there are people from all over the world. When I, yep. I take a lot of Uber, get a lot of people from all over the world to have, have the job with Uber, which is wonderful. Uh, changed the game for our city. It did change the game. We can go to clubs. We can go out now. Before it was hard, you know. But anyway, yep. um, you know, don't have to use your car. Don't have to worry about parking. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, it's it is everyone moved from all over the world, and they'll and I say, well, why'd you choose? And they say, well, it's a great city. And it is. It, it's a tech city, robotic city. It's changed and evolved uh, th- through the years. It's a intellectual city, a research city. And the, the coolest thing was Jim Potolsky just telling, telling us right before we went on. Um, we haven't been to the moon since uh, well, the last long Apollo been, flights. How many years, Jim? Seventy one. Se- so we haven't oh. been to the moon. And we're going again. We're, are we going? Is it manned Unman- or unmanned? Unmanned. unmanned Jim. So, so they're going unmanned to the moon. But, but the cool part of this story, I hope you're sitting down. Mission, constru- <laughs> Mission Control is here in Pittsburgh. On the north side, on Jim. On the north side. Stanley Pikachowski. I, I think he's heading up he's, Mission he's Control. Not forget Easton. It's hello, north side. They got to call in. <laughs> hello, north side. And With, Stanley is the head technician, the head engineer. Side. Yes. Permission control out of the north side. One small stepper, man. One large stepper. Yins are kind. <laughs> it's going to be good. He's going to be calling This the whole is thing. huge news. And you met this these guys wonderful. with yeah. your podcast with Larry. Was it last year? Or the yeah, year about a year or so ago. But these guys, and it is tremendous. We have mission control on the north side. It's going to be great. Was the, was the ship Hold built on. here in Pittsburgh, Jim? It was constructed here. They're going to have, the, it's going to be ready to, to land and they're going to go, you're going to hear, hold on, hold on. Steelers have the ball. Just wait. I'll be back in about two minutes. He comes back. All right. They ain't got the ball now. All uh, right. It's landing. We're landing it. He's this going is on. And when's get the, some rocks, when's the uh, takeoff? Bring it back. Bl- or blast off? January 8th. January 8th. January 8th. Wow, that's next week. Wow. End of next week. Yes. Mission control in on the north side, man. That is so tremendous. I can't wait till we send human beings back again. Yeah. This is a, no, I mean, we have man and that have it. Do have you it think from north Stanley would be willing, to, would be willing to go? No, Stanley would be better at mission control. Better at mission control. He would like it better. I think okay. Stanley would just, yeah, I ain't going to, I don't have time to get no moon, John. <laughs> I ain't got no moon time. What do you think I am? Take that big copy. I don't got that vacation time. Stanley's he 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 want to run it from here. Yeah. He he want to see watch. I watch it. I watch on TV and direct them. <laughs> you know, don't touch that rock. It's got it's got something going on. Don't touch no aliens. They got disease. <laughs> what? But this is <laughs> big news for Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's touch, wonderful. The I, the astronaut uniforms made by pants and hat. <laughs> it's beautiful. You're gonna get. <laughs> All uniforms will include a Donny Iris Dickey. Wear. A Donny Iris Dickey. Donny Iris Dickey. Do people even know what a Dickey is? I do. I don't know. It's number one se- it was the number one selling uh, item at Pants, Pants and Hat, the Donny Iris Dickey. You, could you explain what a Dickey the is? A Dickey is a fake shirt. It's a, like a like fake a turtleneck. turtleneck. And I, you know, whoever invented this, I guess they made a zillion dollars. Because they're it, very comfortable. It was popular at one point. I, don't, I used to wear it, them all the time. Did you really? Absolutely. You wore Dickies. I, I wore Dickies. I'd have a black Dickie. Wow. And again, we, you know. So you put a sweater or something. Or in even a long sleeve dress shirt. And then boom. So there the Dickie go. made it look like you had a shirt. like a turtleneck underneath. And you're, it wasn't the full shirt. You're layering. It was just the neck thing. And it came down your chest a little. And then I'd wear a white <laughs> with my ascot. Nice. I mean, and I'd have a sometimes a scarf. I mean, that's what I want to see this. I was so going were, through my Sewickley period. You were going through your James. You were dressed like James Bond. I was trying to meet women in Sewickley. Wearing Mar- hold a martini and yeah, they dickie didn't like my Honda Accord. Yeah, that like, was the problem. They didn't like your dicky. They like my dicky, but not my picture. Honda Accord. <laughs> you ever seen photos of your dicky? <laughs> no, no, uh, never seen uh, photos of that. The, 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 well, I saw the. I watched. Do they still make dickies? I don't. I don't know. I'm, they they must, right? I mean, look. it's it's the item that just know. keeps on giving. But I'm going to look. It I up would real think quick. they, you know, if not, let's you and I get involved here, and bring it back. I mean, it was the number one item, uh, you know, bought at pants and that. Everyone loved the Dick Donny Iris Dicky. But the uh, I saw um, 
National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, uh, my favorite uh, Christmas movie, that in the Christmas store. And uh, cousin, uh, cousin Eddie, <laughs> cousin Eddie, he had a dicky on. He had a <laughs> right. like he so wore he, a dicky. He had a white. That's right. He had a white like see through sweater with his dicky with like the the outline you could see the uh-huh. outline of the dicky. That's correct. That'll give everybody a visual of what they are. Yeah, but you're for not young su- people. But you're not supposed to see the outline. You're not supposed to. That is a dicky faux pas. Yes. But Did you ever Eddie. have the problem? Did you ever walk out of the house, John? And your dicky was like showing. showing? No. Yeah. No, because I I'm I'm a fashionista. I, okay. So you, you know you're like you, Jim. It, you you knew. Yeah, I knew that if I wore right, you know, like if hey. I wore a white dicky, I'd wear a black shirt or right. I had a bunch of dickies. I I didn't ever wear a dicky, but hey, I I wore. With their Seriously, was going you on. never wore one. I never went with a dicky thing. They were big in the. I'm 70s. not big in the uh, with the, you know, and around my throat like a. I'm not good with the yeah turtlenecks. Compared turtlenecks to aren't my thing, but I I was went through all the you know the Z Cavarici <laughs> days and stuff like that you know. Uh, I don't remember the Z Cavarici? No, pants. I have no they were like clue pants. They were like about. the flared pants. I oh really? Like, like MC Hammerish kind of. Look oh really? In a I weird never went way, there. Like kind okay. of puffy a little bit and but I don't know, they were just whatever. But that was like a cool pants. Huh. Where does Met- we got down Metropole? Yeah, I know. Where my Z Cavaricis? No. There's John. There's John Vante with his dicky on. Yeah, well, you were a famous celebrity. Mm. I was, you know, struggling to make a living. <laughs> you had to play uh, the part. Had to play. Yes, I had, to, had play. to. I had to wear it, John. Oh yeah. I had to wear Z Cavaricis. But I did wear dickies. That's cool, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, so dickies are around? I looked nothing, nothing. Well, we got to bring it back. I wonder it, what are they I really called? I don't you know. I think dickies. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Right. I'm almost certain. What I did a quick Google and I found, know. I found nothing. I that's sad. The it dicky is, is gone. The dicky went extinct on us, and no one told us. No one knew. Just went away. If Let's Walmart doesn't sell them, then they're not sold. All right, we could bring back the dicky. We should. I think we, we should. We could do a Yinz or dicky. Do you think there's a market for it though? Do you really think somebody's? Gonna I love them. Really? Yeah. I don't know if that's really going to be big anymore. I doubt it. If I mean, you're fooling big. people with like with your shirt. You have no. It's sh- it's deceitful. It's kind of the weird, right? Yeah. Because you take your shirt off and there's like, you just got like a little neck thing. And it's yeah, like, hey, hey, you, hey, shouldn't hey, you, were... you shouldn't take your shirt off. No, you never. Well, I guess that's no, part no, of it. You have to commit to it. Never. Yeah, you got to be very I committed. guess I would never take my shirt off if I would wear a dickie. That's true. Nope. I don't know. It's, it's kind of strange. But we, we, wear, we wear strange things in our life. It's 2000. Le- leisure suits? It's 2024. Remember everybody had leisure, leisure suits? Leisure suits. They were horrible. Oh, my God. They were just tremendously bad i don't think i ever wore one of those either oh my god thank god i never caught it on fire they were like some sort of weird polyester oh yeah polyester there material. was some sort of like really probably highly flammable something whatever they yeah. were ugly they were horrible did you i had horrible. did you have a leisure suit no i never wore a leisure i did suit. i had a leisure suit everybody did i don't know why i did when i was like 19 years old or 20 or whatever, I, I don't know why i had a leisure suit yeah everyone did it was like a cool i thought it was cool but and, I, and it was, I mean, but it was, at that Maybe time, at the time, it was cool. It had like bell bottoms, the whole deal. You know, I've completely <laughs> come around on the whole disco thing. I just, Jim knows this. We talked about the Bee Gees documentary. Yeah. yeah. And when we were younger and we loved Led Zeppelin and Rush and Springsteen. Sure. And I was a rocker. We'd make fun. Yes. Of the Bee Gees. At, you know, at, at ah, that that's not music, blah, blah, blah. But they were genius. Genius. And the music they created is mm-hmm. so beautifully crafted. Right. And those voices and the parts and. And I just they watched. Got swept up oh, 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 wait! He's presenting a dicky. Let me see. They got swept up into it. And then we're gonna. Jim I'm Patulski gonna, I'm gonna tell dickie? you something. Where did Jim? Jim, where did you? Where did Flower you find? men's mock dicky. Wait, where, where did he find it? He that? found it on Google. Faux turtleneck. He looked up. A faux turtleneck. Here it is. Okay. It's called a fake turtleneck right. dicky. Is it on Amazon? Can you yes, get it on is. It? Thanks. You Jim. can get a dicky on Amazon, people. Yep. It's called a fake turtleneck. Ah, there you but go. I want to finish this thought about the Bee Gees. Go ahead. I'm looking. Watching the documentary. I love these uh, classic album. Oh yeah. Things. Yes. So yesterday, I must have watched five or six of them. <laughs> okay. One of my favorites right. was the making of Rumors. Really? Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Did you see it? Okay. So what made you love Lindsay this? Buckingham is talking about a guitar part and he's talking about don't stop believing or okay. yeah, don't stop, stop yeah. thinking about tomorrow mm-hmm. and he says i can now admit yeah. that i completely lifted the the 
Really? From Jive Talking, the Bee Gees. Really? He said, I loved what they did with that. Wow. He said, and I just put that onto my guitar and went. Well, think about, think about the hits. Oh. That the Bee Gees cranked out. Unbelievable. And they were one after another. That they didn't even say uh, the hits that they wrote for others. Yeah, hit, hit, that's on top of that. Like 90 some top tens. From Saturday Night. Well, that Fever. was that, that was that, off that, the that album broke them to the, you know. And their brother, Andy Gibb, had he like went four, on to have three or four ones. number ones. Yeah. That, that's a pretty amazing. It's family. sad they're all gone except for. One's left? Yeah. One the BG. oldest. One BG left. Barry. He's the oldest. Barry's too, still isn't he? alive. The oldest, he's the one with the falsetto. Okay. And that came That's about cool. by accident. Really? What do you mean? He wasn't. He said on his He keys? was screwing around or something in the studio. Like, no, and they were like, where'd that voice come from? And that's when he oh. went into that whole falsetto. It's a really? great documentary. I'm going to watch. Yeah, I can't wait to see You'll it. You'll love it. I, Again, I, we respect as we grow older. Yes, you start look well. You start you look deeper. Songs. You look deeper into things. And I like that the, the, the uh, you know, a lot of younger people kids young generation are finding these great things too they're discovering things they're i think i love that i think the new generation is more open-minded than in the past i think this new generation yeah. is cool because they they're looking at a lot of retro things they're, they're you're seeing albums coming back yeah Kid, kids are loving to to listen to, to to vinyl again you're seeing a lot of that and they're getting the the richness of it and, and the, we really miss that I'm, I'm glad they're doing that i'm glad to see some of it Coming back, it's in a small way, but I like it because it's it was the, the generation before people before the vinyl started coming back real hot got robbed of the artwork. The artwork on those oh, albums yeah. when we were kids, <coughs> that artwork was amazing, man. To open from, that up and read the lyrics from and the, the credits from and see sticky the... fingers to oh, whatever yeah. albums that you know, the Pink Floyd albums. The, Our the friends at Wild Cherry, yeah, Wild Cherry, Sergeant one of the more Pepper. famous covers. It's just one after another. To confirm another. what you're saying, before I came here to meet you and Jim today, mm -hmm. I had a yeah. meeting in Monroeville yeah. with a client. Yeah. And I don't know, we started talking about music. She knows I'm involved with music. Right. And so I said, hey, do you have a turntable? Because my Brick by Brick album just came in on vinyl. Oh, you did vinyl. I that's got right. it on vinyl. You brought it back. Yeah. That's because it's a hot thing right now. And I'm going to start promoting it next month. But okay. anyhow, she said, I don't have a turntable, but my 22-year-old daughter does. <laughs> See? And I say, cool. well, your 22-year-old daughter isn't going to want to listen to my music. She said, oh, yes, she will. She has Fleetwood Mac, Led Zeppelin, That's Bruce Springsteen, uh, Bob Seger. Yes. I said, well, may I gift you this album? I would be honored. She said, oh, she'll listen to it. Believe me. I'm seeing it more and more. And that's what I said. Yeah, I'm really just what you're saying. excited. To, 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 22 years open old. open-minded, and they're finding out some of these great artists that, that we grew up with. And they're more open-minded than us in certain yep. ways. And so it's really cool. So, yeah, so, John, so your album is... Brick by brick is the vinyl is yeah, coming CD out. CD and vinyl and on, next month. Yeah, I, ha I have them, but but it's going on sale. Um, yeah, get I'm going to promote month. it next month as a fundraiser for you know Band Together Pittsburgh. Our oh yeah, tell, music. tell everybody about your the charity work. Well, with Band Together Pittsburgh. It's cool. Band Together Pittsburgh is an organization that creates mm -hmm. music programs for people on the autism spectrum. Okay, live performance, instruments, lessons, DJ training, and and it's been just the Lord has blessed us. In so many ways, Jim's a big part of it. You're a big part of it. You've you've I supported so many of our it's events. It's a great organization. Yeah, and uh, you mean, see the, the kids how they blossom. Oh, it's me, amazing, amazing. So it's it's been great. Yeah, it is. It is, and you do a lot of coming up. We'll be doing shows. Uh, to and you money. do too, brother. Absolutely. You, you've never. You've if it's humanly possible, you and Larry Richard. Oh yeah, I love it. You only say no if you just can't be there. Yes, but, but I, you're yes ninety nine percent of the time. I remember when uh, I was a kid. I don't know, eighty seven, eighty eight, whatever. It was the first, whenever they did uh, billboard campaigns uh, at DVE, they were half million dollar campaigns or three hundred four. Really, it was major. So this was, was everywhere. And so we did uh, the one, the very first one. Uh, Scott Paulson and I did one. I was dressed as a an angel he was a biker guy i, don't, I can't remember it was, like, it was kind of funny we, we in uh it was billboard all over the city and so we're like big as life and i remember on wednesdays i get my grandmother she lived in shaler <laughs> i lived on the north side of the town <clears throat> schoolhouse apartments but i'd go i'd drive out to get her to bring her to south side for the bingo every wednesday we do a ritual we go bingo you know and uh rock and roll dj but uh, but bingo was important and we go to eat park and then we go to bingo 
uh, and, and Grandma and I, or I go to Giant Eagle, whatever. With her, it's a, it's a little bit. Anyway, one of the Wednesdays, we're driving through North Side, off the side, and this billboard's like bigger than life. And I was like, "Look at that, Grandma! It's cool." She goes, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" She, and, and she said, "But she goes, you know, you're you're getting a lot of you're known you're known a lot now. They see billboards and all the stuff, people talking, the magazines." And she said, "Don't forget." The only thing that's gonna gonna be to make you feel complete is gonna be giving to people. Isn't that what you do with it is gonna be how you'll be remembered. Yep. That's the only thing. These won't these will be forgotten. But you'll be remembered on how you because you'll it'll complete you. And she remember her telling me that. And she was right. So we I started, you know, realizing to uh help every help out as much as I could. And that's how I got involved with, you know, all the charities. From, the Animal you know, Friends. A, a, Animal Friends, Epilepsy Foundation, yep. you know, and all the, you know, the, several different charities that, that I would get and involved And you could with. not have a better partner with your Yinzer program than Larry Richard. And Larry. Yeah, that's how this, I met Larry, Larry 25 years ago. Larry is the same, charity work. same philosophy. You have the same philosophy. Yep. It's just yep. a like-minded philosophy. Yep. And, uh, yeah, Larry's the same way. And, we, and a lot of our Yinzer products, we, we, well, we like to give small you know good percentage portions go to different yeah. charities and things like that so uh yinzer hot dogs coming out next uh very soon yinzer, i'll be announcing yinzer hot dogs there so our podcast i'm ready uh, listeners get I'm a little ready. little inside yeah, info here so we're coming out we got a truck we're gonna have a, a place uh, we're signing at least for so i'll let everyone know you know soon uh the, the podcast listeners and uh so so john brought us the number seven well, John didn't make... bring you to number seven. Yes, he but did. I will you say, say producer yes. Jim's quality of his oh, recordings and yes, posting. Jim does amazing let's work. Let's make sure man. we share the credit with uh, yes. our technical guy here. Absolutely. Um, so we're gonna, we're, yeah, we we love coming up here in, in the studio and talk and having fun. Uh, but we we're pretty soon we would do one that we'll figure out do a live show uh, somewhere. Have a couple guests and we will. Uh, I got. I have a line here. I'm. A, I'll get some dickies. I'll buy some dickies. That would be cool. Away. We could take a picture with our dickies. Let's see. Nineteen dollars. I got this deal here. Uh, it's dicky detachables. They're called navy or fake blue. turtlenecks. Uh, a navy blue one, a white one, a dark gray, and black. So you get four dickies for nineteen dollars. So yeah, nineteen ninety nine. I'm sorry, but yeah, that's the price. That's what dickies are going for now. In case you were wondering. Nineteen bucks. Nineteen ninety nine for four dickies. You buy them. You don't just buy one dicky. You buy them in a group. Are they different colors? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. You got four different colors. All they're, and they're all turtleneck. Um, personally, let's see. I'm gonna go with the black one. I think, I, I'll get I think the theme of this show is in two different ways. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you talked about dickies. Yeah. And now we're talking about a different kind of dicky. Yes, exactly. It's a full circle. Show. It is. It's we, amazing. We cover all the ground. It's, <laughs> this is why you're number seven, Jimmy. <laughs> That's exactly. And climbing. And, and hopefully climbing. climbing. It's uh, January uh, 20th. Oaks Theater, Jim Cran and Larry Richard. Oaks Theater. I cannot wait. And I'll be announcing Steamworks in March, of course, coming up. But I have other shows. But January 20th, I'm looking forward to the Oaks Theater in Oakmont. We'll be there. John's uh, gonna. We'll talk about next episode. We'll talk about your album next episode because you're gonna That's have great. the vinyl, yeah. right? And all the stuff coming out, right? And I want to tell you one of my grandmother's stories. That Please, not That's... not today. Oh, you I'm gonna save, save that. You sure, we're gonna save that. It's a little longer. Okay. And you're all right. You're the, I'm gonna tell you. I can't wait. A couple good grandma stories. I, I loved my grandma. Yeah. yeah, I had a great. I was lucky. Me too. I had a great. I had a great, wonderful grandma. Uh, I had a great grandma. Also, for a total of my mid 30s, she lived 102. Did you really? She was sharp as a razor, lived I 102. Yeah, she was the coolest. I, I'm going to tell you the one funny. Both were. Both I'm going to tell you one funny, quick grandmas. grandma story. Please. So, after my cancer surgery, mm -hmm. I went into because, you know, when they remove an organ, my John kidney was removed. John had uh, kidney, kidney cancer. Kidney cancer. And survivor. And yep. And 100 the Lord balanced. has blessed me with that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I went into a very terrible depression. Sure. It, because, you know, they. Right. Your body's all messed up. Yeah. And I'm going healing. to therapy. So <laughs> the uh, psychologist or therapist says to me, well, I'd like to ask you if there's one person in your life, living or deceased, that represents joy to you, right. who would that be? I said, well, that's my grandma Vento. <laughs> Even though I love my parents, my right. family. I know exactly. I said, grandma Vento was I, my yeah. guiding light. Right. She said, so what I want you to do 
is take, do you have any photos of Grandma Vet? Of course I do. I have a framed eight by 10. I want you to put that on your dresser or a place in your bedroom. Okay. So before you turn those lights out at night, right. the last face that you see is your Grandma Vet. That's so cool. Isn't it? So I do this. Well, And I yeah. do this for weeks. And then, of course, who comes into my life? The Lord brings Michelle your into Michelle. my life. Wow. Wow. And we start dating. Wow. And um, finally, after dating for a while, yeah. she stays an evening. And the next morning, we're having a coffee, and I'm in love. <laughs> yeah. And she said, you know, it was a wonderful evening. She said, but there's like this one weird thing I'd like to change. Okay. She said, does Grandma Vento have to look at us? Yeah, you know, Grandma probably would have said that, look, John, I did my job. She had 13 kids. You Grandma Vento the, yeah, did, right. She gets right, it. Right. Grandma would so, get it. Of all the people, Grandma would get it. So Michelle made right? me move Grandma Vento yes. from my bedroom down to my office. That's so, tremendous. That's, that's tr well, I think Grandma Vento would have said, yeah. I oh, agree, Grandma I agree was with this. Crazy. Uh, I agree with this. Grandma she Vento would have saying. loved Michelle. You know, so. uh, yeah, when I you know, grew up Catholic. Okay, so, of course. Uh, I remember this priest telling me, uh, you know, a saint isn't a God. The saint, you don't pray to us. Never. The saint no. is not, it's a human being. He, I said, well, he said, a saint's a 100% first rate human being. That's the definition. And he said, Jim, there's saints amongst us. And I there said, sure yeah, are. my grandmother, great grandmother were saints. And, Grandma Vento was the same. Yep. You, know, you think about people like to influence your life who are good people, 100% first rate human being. Well, everyone out there listening Unselfish. has somebody in their lives that was a, or is a, was or is a 100% yep. first rate human being. A saint. And that's what the saint is. Yep. So it's kind of cool. So there so, you go. Yep. So we'll end the show on that. Yeah. On a good note. Thank I'm you for letting note. me share that funny me story. Me too. Me too, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. Jim Patolsky, and we love it. Uh, we'll see you uh, next time. It's Jim Crenn, No Restrictions with John Vento.